after I left, I left Firefall in 80 and mm -hmm. moved back to Cal California and um, was doing a bunch of stuff, was working with Tim Goodman on his, his project, which was wonderful. And we were in a re rehearsal studio and I saw Howard Lee's heart, you know, and, and his guitar tech rolling his road cases out of a room. And I went, How oh, you know, you, do, you, do you know Howard? And he goes, yeah, I've been at Howard's tech for a, a long time. And Gavin was it, my, his name. And I said, would you please tell how give give Howard this note and I wrote a little hey hey Howard I'm back I'm back in LA <clears throat> what are you doing hey you know here's my number and I heard nothing for like three months and then I got a call from him he said he called me in the typical Howard Lease deadpan kind of thing I was like hey how would you like to be in hard and I went yeah, that would be that would be good. I could, <laughs> that could happen. And I uh, I went. They, they said, "Oh, come on down down to the." So Nancy and Howie were <clears throat> in Redline Studios, I think, in Burbank, someplace. And I went down there, and I thought I would jam with those guys. And 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 Nancy and I sat in this little courtyard, and I had my bass, and they got a little amp for me, and they she said, "Well." play me something man and I went okay <laughs> you know, so, and I do these kind of well the good they're kind of guitar little oriented things with chords and stuff mm -hmm. and and I, I and what I think I did was something like that kind of a little melodic chordal thing mm -hmm. <clears throat> and she said okay fine thank you and then I wound up going up to her place in Woodenville, Washington, <clears throat> and that's where there was a, a jam session with Ann, and that's where I think if there was any a real um, audition, that might have been it. Because mm -hmm. uh, it was Jeff Cathan was the drummer uh, who wound up doing a lot of stuff with uh, with Howard later. Uh, and we killed it. We killed it. I mean, it was, it was a great band. Yeah, it was solid and rocking. And then <clears throat> Denny Carmasi wound up becoming available after leaving the Michael Schenker band. Right. <clears throat> he he was touring in Europe at that time, and uh, and when Denny kind of came into the fold, that's when it really locked in big big time and. And that was a seriously badass band, man. <laughs> I saw that. Serious. Band. serious. I mean, in the studio, we killed it. I mean, we would, uh, the guys would get these songs and we would assimilate them and arrange them. And then they would get vetted. And then, of course, the, the girls would have to go, okay, well, we think this and that. And then the, the, the producer would have to, have the same input but basically the three guys kind of did a lot of work to make that era of heart really as successful as it was and that was a very interesting point in the music business we're talking 85 i guess when um it became showbiz and you were on mtv every half hour every hour i mean what about love was in constant rotation yep. and you not only had to play good mark but you had to look good and you had the um, the faux military jacket and the beautiful tuft of blonde hair like David used to have back in the 80s, I believe. <laughs> well, My you know, tuft uh, is not so... It, it's tough. Your tuft is tough. My tuft is tough. <laughs> yeah, tough. Oh, I have <laughs> oh man. It's okay. Well, he beats yeah. me up all the time. I never had a problem dressing up. I mean, I mean the whole... I mean, Jojo Gunn was pretty androgynous. We had some wacky kind of clothes, even though I was only around for a year. And yeah, and uh, but well, here's David. Here's my fashion cue. See, I'm from the I'm from the Kaz. Right? See, I never go out of style. 
This is 50 years ago. This is now. So there you he go. He was man. so ahead of his time. <laughs> so ahead of his time. But I had no problem <clears throat> dressing up or not dressing down. I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Um, just get me on stage or get me in the yeah. studio and it'll be game on, you know. But it, it, it's also a look that, that complemented the music because you had a big sound, so you had to have a big stage appearance. I don't, it's, no, it's no different than, say, Broadway. Well, your dad, the actor, was, was he around to see those hard years? Yeah, he, he okay. showed, and you know he was, he would come on, we he he would approve and, but you're right, it, there was that production value, <laughs> to the whole thing. The uh, the thing is that I think Hart missed the boat, and I I don't want to tread on sensitive prop uh, issues, but you know when. When Anne was starting to have uh, a problem with her image, instead of really hiding it and stretching film to embrace it and be like the Cass Elliot, yes, sure, or, or the or the group that would lead into lead in to the to the marketplace, the grunge movement to be the the yeah. the, the mother, you know, the Earth Mama of the right. Mama. Friedman, uh, from Washington, I think we missed the boat because <clears throat> the, the girls were, I think, uncomfortable. With, obviously, the reaction to it has been to deny and say, oh, we were, we, we sold out and we did this and that. I had no problem with it, but they did. And I think we missed an opportunity to be really honest and just go, this is who we are. Dig it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.